Hello and welcome to our next set of stats notes. Um, we are in section 6.5. This is our last section for chapter 6. Um, we still have plenty more sections to cover before our next exam, but you know we are almost done with chapter 6. So in chapter 6 we've been dealing with these normal distributions. And we've learned lots of ways to work with these normal distributions, how to find the areas under these curves or the probability percentages. Um, and they're valuable tools. We'll actually use those throughout most of the rest of this semester. Um, but they only work if the set of data you're working with is normal. We saw in the last section, if you have a big enough sample, you can kind of guarantee normality, but um, sometimes you need to know if your data is normal because you don't have a big enough set. And so there's some ways to assess if your data is normal, figure out if it's normal. So there's a couple different ways. One way is just to construct a histogram because we know the shape of a normal distribution. We know it's bell-shaped, it's got that nice um, symmetry to it. So if you make a whole histogram of all the data, then you could see, okay, that is a nice normal distribution. You're good to go. Um, or you can make a box plot. Um, we saw with the box plot that that was a great way to identify outliers. Um, if you have outliers, you're not going to have a normal set of data. So you can take your data set, your sample data, and you make a box plot with it, and you identify that, oh, there's probably an outlier here or there or both. Um, then that's going to tell you your data is not normal, and you're not going to be able to use those normal distribution techniques unless you have a big enough sample. The last way, and this is the way we're going to introduce because we haven't done it yet, is the normal quantile plot. So this is a third way to kind of check the normality. So this is what a real statistician would do in real life, is they would collect their data, and they'd make either a histogram or box plot or both, or and then also the normal quantile plot, and they'd check those plots, those graphs, and say, does this indicate my data is normal? Is the histogram a nice bell shape with the symmetry and all that? Does the box plot have any potential outliers? Because if it has outliers, that's a good sign that it's not normal. And then the last one will be the normal quantile plot. So what is a normal quantile plot? Well, um, to do a normal quantile plot, also called a normal probability plot, you do a plot of data values, the values from your set, versus their corresponding z-scores from the standard normal distribution. So we're going to do the values versus their z-scores. That's what a normal quantile plot is. It's a plot of the values from your data set versus their z-scores. So how do we construct this? Well, first thing you're going to do, you actually have to sort the data. So we always go from lowest to highest. Once you have the data sorted lowest to highest, you're going to use the sample size, whatever n is your sample size, and you're going to make values 1 over twice the sample size, two, 3 over twice the sample size, 5 over twice the sample size, until you have 1 for every single one set of numbers of your values. So if you have like 10 values, you go you know, 10 spots. If you have 20 values, you have 20 spots. So that's why they put the dot, 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 because we're going to make these values um, for your set. And again, the bottom is just going to be twice whatever the number of your data set. So if you have 10 numbers, the bottom would be 20. If you have 20 numbers, the bottom would be 40. And then once you have enough values, you have n values, then you're going to use those values to find corresponding z-scores. So find corresponding z-scores, and we're using these as areas to the left. These will always be fractions, um, less than one, so they'll be, you can use them as percentages, and so then you'll use those as areas and find z-scores that go along with them. And then we'll graph a scatter plot, you know, so a, a graph is two different coordinates, the x and y coordinates, using these z-scores we got from these areas and the data sorted from most to greatest, those kind of matching coordinates. So we'll graph scatter plot, you know, data versus z-scores. Okay, so let's look at an example. So here we go, I've got a set of data. I'm using a pretty small set of data just so we can do this by hand pretty quickly. So we got four, negative four, three, five, one, two, negative two, and negative three. And then the first thing we said is we need to sort it from lowest to highest. So we need to put this data in order from lowest to highest. So we're going to start off with the smallest number, which is negative 4. And then we have our next smallest is negative 3. Next smallest is negative 2. We have 1, 3, and 5. And those are our x, there are our um, values, right? Those are the values. So that's the data values in order. Next thing we're going to take, we're going to do this construction where we make the 1 over twice the number. Notice that n in this case, because there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, n is 6. So 2n is going to be 12, because it's twice as much, right? So it's 2 times 6. So to make this, we're going to have 1 over 
12. This is going to be our first one because we have, you know, we start with 1. Next one's going to be 3 over 12. Next one's 3 over 12. Next one's going to be 5 over 12. So on and so forth. We should have 1 for each number. So the next one's going to be 7 over 12. Next one's going to be 9 over 12. Next one's going to be 11 over 12. And so we're just going up by 2 on the top every time, right? You see the pattern, we're just doing odd numbers. The bottom's just staying 12. And again, you should have the same number of these as you have those. You have those. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Now we're not going to graph these numbers. We're going to take these and we're going to find z-scores. So to find z-scores, we're going to use that inverse norm. Remember, inverse norm is the way you find a z-score if you have the area. And these are area to the left. So we'll use each one of these. I'm going to call these A's. Each one of these A's, we'll use those as the area. And because we're doing normal z-scores, we're going to have our normal distribution, the standard, standard normal distribution as the mean of 0 and a standard deviation of 1. So it's always going to be 0 and 1 because, again, this is a mean. This is a standard deviation. And we're doing z-scores, so we're thinking you know, the standard normal distribution where the mean is 0 and the standard deviation is 1. So each one of these is going to plug in the inverse norm and get their z-scores. Or, or sorry, yeah, the z-scores, because these are areas we're getting z-scores. So that's what we call these a's, because they're areas. So how do you find, we want to find the z's. The z's. So the z's, we're going to start typing these in. I'm going to do second distribution. I'm going to go to my inverse norm option. So I'm doing that, inverse norm option. Area, first one is going to be 1 divided by 12. And you can actually just type these in as fractions. That works out pretty easily. So you just do 1 divided by 12, 0, 1, because we got 0 from a mean, 1 from a standard deviation. Okay, enter. I'm going to type it in like that. I'm just going to hit enter again. And it gives me my z-score. So my z-score, negative 1 point, I'll put negative 1.4. I'm around quite a bit just because I don't want to have long, super long numbers that are hard to write, work with. So that's my first number. I'm going to do this six times, right? So each time, I'm going to type that in. So second distribution, inverse norm, going to be 3 divided by 12, so the next one, still 0, 0, 1, still 1, leave those alone, and I get my next value, negative 0.7, we'll put. and then I keep going, so the next one, second distribution, inverse norm, we'll do the 5 over 12, still 0, 1, hit enter twice, and I get negative 0.2. Keep going. So I do second distribution, inverse storm. Yeah, seven divided by twelve. Oops, okay, so seven divided by twelve. Okay, there we go. And I get 0.2. So now it's positive. It's positive 0.2. I'll do the next one. Inverse norm, nine divided by twelve. And I get positive point. 7 if I round that, so I'm going to positive 0.7. And then last one, first norm, 11 divided by 12. And I get 1.4. And there's kind of just a symmetry here, which not to be not too surprising because of the kind of the spacing of these numbers being kind of equally spaced a little bit. So we do get a kind of a symmetry. Now what we're going to do is we're going to graph, we use the top values, the values, as our x's, and we're going to use these z-scores as our y's. And so each one of these is paired up. So the negative 4 goes with the first number, so it goes with the negative 1.4. So to graph that, I'm going to go negative 4 for my x, and then I'm going to go negative 1.4 for my y. It's going to be right there. It's my first value. Next one, negative 3, I'm going to go negative 0.7. So that's going to be not quite negative 1, so it's down about here. Next one's negative 2, and we go down to negative 0.2. So negative 0.2, that's not going to be very far down, so it's going to be like that. Uh, 1, notice this is not negative 1, it's 1. And so far they've been in order, but there's a space here. So now I'm at 1, and the next value is 0 0.2. So this is actually up a little bit, like 0 0.2. Next one is 3, so I'm over here at 3, and that's 0 0.7. So at 3, I get 0.7, it's like this. And then the next one is 5, so I'm at 5, and it's 1.4. So 5 can take it 1.4, and it looks about like that. And that is our normal quantile plot. This is actually a way to assess if the data is normal. So you draw the plot, and then you use that to determine if it's normal. 
um, we are kind of looking for a straight line. So this is actually a good sign. That's kind of what we're looking for. We'll talk more about what we look for um, here in a little bit. But before I get to that, I want to show you how you don't have to do it this way. So I did it this way. You can do it by hand where you construct all this. And we used to use the calculator for finding the z scores. But you can actually skip this whole process. Because your calculator is smart enough to do this for you. It'll actually graph a normal quantile plot. So again, you know, this is how people used to have to do it. But thankfully now, you can skip this and let the calculator do it. So let's do a different set and let's let the calculator do it for us. So it's kind of tedious. And that's why it's nice to just let the calculator do it for most of the problems. Um, to do this, um, to make a normal quantile plot, um, we're going to use technology. Um, we'll put the data in our first list, list one, and we'll graph the data. So we'll go to the stat plot and graph it. And then we'll use the last or sixth graph option because that is the normal quantile plot. We actually have a graph built into the calculator that is specific for this. It's the normal quantile plot. So, okay, so I'm going to do that with this. I'm going to do, remember you go to um, the stat option is where you go. So stat right there is where we go to edit. So I hit edit. I already typed this data in my list one. So here I have it. So my list one, you see I have 372, 387, 395, all that stuff typed in there. So you can go ahead and can type in your calculator. You know, if you need to pause, go ahead and do that. And then once the data's in there, remember to the graph it, we hit second. And then the y equals does the stat plot. Now I've been using my calculator for a different class, so I stop mine, shut mine off. So if your stat plot's off, remember you can hit enter on there and just hit enter on, on and I'll turn it back on. And then you have six graph options. Mine are all lined up. Some people will have theirs in two rows. You want the very last one. It looks like a series of dots raised into the, the right. It almost looks like a straight line. But it's the very last option. If you have two rows, it'd be the last option in the second row. Um, since we put our data on list one, we want to make sure the X list is list one. Frequency should just be a one. Um, you can change the symbol you use, but it doesn't matter. I just leave it the default usually. Once that's all good, then you can hit graph. Now, if your graph is not zoomed correctly, even if it was zoomed for the last option, you probably have to fix it. Remember that the zoom we like to use, we hit the zoom button, and we like zoom stat, right? Because this is stats class. We're going to hit zoom 9. And now we'll see it. Oops. I must have hit the wrong one. That's not good. Oh, yep. I forgot to hit enter on the sixth graph. That's why I was still doing a box plot. My bad. Okay, now we hit graph. And now it's right. Because now it's zoom stat. I think we actually... I might have to rezoom it. Okay, there you go. I had to have to rezoom it. So every time you use it, you usually have to zoom nine again just to make it fix. Okay, that's what it looks like. So this is zoom size. This is our normal quantile plot. So graphing it. So again, we put you know L one and we did the stat plot and option six. It gave us a graph that kind of looked like this. You know where all these values. Do, 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 do. And it looked like that. And that's what we're kind of looking for. And again, it does have this kind of basically straight line shape. And that is what you're really looking for. A nice straight line shape like this actually tells us it's probably normal. That's that's normal data, normal distribution. So that's kind of the basic shape we're looking for. That's a good sign. Um, but that's the idea. So you can graph these fairly easily. Again, you just put the data in list one, you know, hit your stat plot, you know, and then Graph option six. You will have to zoom nine to get the nice zoom because that's your stat zoom. Um, and that's the way to do it. So you can see how that's so much easier than having to sit there and do all those calculations we did because the calculator did that. Now, if you want the values for this, you can hit this um, trace key and it'll actually tell you the values of each one of these. So you can see how this is 351 is the smallest number. So if you look at this, that 351 is the smallest number. And then it does give you the y value here. That would be the z score that corresponds with that. So that's actually what this is doing. It's showing the, the value and its corresponding z score for all of these. Um, here, this set had what? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So instead of like 1 over 12, 2, 2, 3 over 12, 5 over 12, this one, because there's 12 options, actually, we double that. So we did 1 over 24 and 3 over 24 and 5 over 24. And we had like 12 of those. And that's why we have different values here because we had a different count here. But yeah, that's the idea. So each value versus its area z-score, you know, the z-score that corresponds to it, and that gives us this nice graph. Okay, so that's how to get the normal quantile plot. Now we've got to take that normal quantile and decide, is it normal based on that? And I kind of mentioned already that we're looking for a straight line, and that's part of it, but there's a little bit more to it. So let's look at that 
criteria. So to, to a check normality, to assess normality from a quantile plot, we look at say, um, the quantile plot to satisfy these criteria. So it's got two main things it's got to do. It's got to be reasonably close to a straight line. So we kind of just saw there was a little bit of wiggling, and that was okay. I wasn't too worried about that, right? Either one of these, you know, a little bit of wiggle. Mostly, though, it's mostly a pretty straight line. So as long as we're looking and seeing a pretty straight line, that's what we want. Also, it cannot show a systematic pattern other than a straight line. So if it's got some kind of like systematic thing going on, like stair steps or like a curve shape that, you know, systematic, then we wouldn't like that either. That would be a bad sign. That's probably not normal. But if it makes if it basically makes a straight line and there's no obvious other pattern, we're happy. Now note, these criteria are applied more strictly for larger sets. So applied more strictly for larger sets. The bigger the set of data you're working with, the more it should look like a just straight, straight line. That's why the first one, where I don't have that many data points and it looks kind of curvy. I'm not going to really worry that much about the curvy because in general it's pretty straight and it's a really small data set. So this doesn't have to be super perfect. The second set, you know, I've got a few more, but I'm going to be a little bit stricter because I do have more numbers here. But again, it's still only 12 numbers, so this is probably good enough. If I had like 100 numbers or 1,000 numbers, then I might say, well, that's not good enough. I want more straight. And, you know, the more numbers you get, the straighter you kind of want to be. Okay, so you should be able to look at a normal quantile plot. You should be able to, kind of be able to think about it and say, okay, is it nice and normal because it's relatively straight and there's no pattern? So you look at stuff like this and you say, okay, well, you can see they even drew the straight line here. And there's a little bit of deviation, but, you know, there's not that many points. So we would probably call that normal. So we'd say, yes, normal. Because it's a nice straight line. So straight. There's no obvious other patterns. It just looks like a straight line. This one, you know, it looks fairly straight. Like it kind of follows the line. But you also notice this really specific curve pattern. And so this one we'd say is no, it's not normal because it follows a pattern. You can kind of see that pattern where it's kind of following this curve shape. So that's not going to be considered normal. And so we wouldn't want that one. It follows the pattern. Um, this one, you'll notice that you know, it's straight here, but then you notice that there's actually values going all the way down here. And so it's not very straight at all, right? Because it kind of has a straight part, but that dives down here. So this is no, because it's not straight. Too many values to be that crooked. You know, that's that's not what, what kind of straight we're looking for. Last one here, not very many values. They're fairly straight. So you can kind of see how they're close to that straight line there. That one, yeah, that would definitely be normal. That's what we're looking for. So this is one thing statisticians do. You know, they, they take their set of data they collected, their sample data, and they graph it. You know, again, they can check the box plot for outliers. They check the histogram to make sure the shape is kind of normal. And then the other thing they do is they graph the normal quantile plot. And see, does it make a relatively straight line? The straighter the line, the more they can say, yeah, this is normal data. I can use all the techniques we get to use with normal distributions. But if it's not very straight, well, then you got to go use more advanced techniques. And thankfully, we won't have to really cover those because we're doing intro stats. But yeah, a real statistician, you know, someone who's got to get a career out of this, you know, if they had non normal data, they'd have to go back and use those techniques that are really a little bit harder to use that they don't really have to look at. Okay, let's do one more. So we'll do this set. Again, we're going to create the normal quantile plot and decide if it is normal from that. Now, I cheated a little bit. I put this in my calculator again already, so I don't have to do it again. So I've got my stat edit. I actually put it in list three. So this is the data right here. I put it mine in list three. You can put it in whatever list you want, but I put mine in list three. When I go to graph it, though, so when I go to my second stat plot and I go to graph it, I do have to change my list here because I put this in list three. So I'm going to put this as list three. So we have second, list three. So now it's graphing this data. So, so go to your stat button, hit edit, type this data in. If you put it in list one, then you can just keep using list one. But I put it in list three, so I use list three. Second stat plot. Make sure, again, that it's on the sixth option. You want the sixth option. So again, we're going to put this, I put, you know, in the list. And we're going to hit um, stat plot. And then the sixth graph. And then we just hit graph. Now, it's not showing up, but that's because, again, we're zoomed on the previous set of the data. So every time you do this, you're going to hit that zoom and hit that nine. And so, again, we'll have to zoom. Nice. 
After you do all that, you get a graph. It looks like this. You can see how there's that data. And so if I draw my kind of rough graph again, it has to be like, how it looks like this. And there's one like right over here. And this one looks pretty good until you see this one value out here. This is not very good because this one out here it's really far spaced away from the rest of them, right? It's kind of way far away from the rest of them. There's a big gap right here, a big gap. So this gap tells us that this value is probably an outlier, right? We said outliers are things that are far away from the rest. That's what's happening here. Whenever you have that kind of thing with a normal quantile plot where most of the stuff is together, you, there's not very much space between them. But then you have one big gap between numbers. Well, that's going to be an outlier. So this is a big gap, so that's an outlier. And if it has an outlier, it's not normal. Part of being normal is not having outliers, because when you have an outlier, it's going to always stretch to one side or the other. Remember when we had a skewness, and we said that you can be more stretched on the right or the left. This would be skewed on the right, because it has a high, high value outlier. So on the right, it's going to be way more spread out than it would be on the left. So this is not normal, not normal, because outlier. In fact, we could go back and do the box plot graph if you do your st second stat plot again and do the box plot. Just do the one that shows the outliers. Remember, this is the first option that shows the outliers because it's got the two little dots. If you do that option, graph it, you'll see that they mark that as an outlier as well. So your box plot would agree. It also says that's an outlier. Everything else works pretty good, but that guy's probably an outlier. So since it has an outlier, it's not normal. But again, that's one thing we can do to assess normality is the quantile plot. The box plot helps. Histogram, you can always draw the histogram. That's actually another graph option. So if I do the um, third option, third option, that give us the histogram. And you can graph that. Again, you'll have to zoom nine um, most of the time. And you can see how most of that is here, but then we get the one value over here. So again, you can see how it's not normal because that one value out here that's an outlier and kind of skews it and all that. So, so those are other ways you can check for normality. And again, when we're doing statistics, we want to work with normal sets. So it's good to be able to check the normality before we do that. We're not going to actually make you do a lot of normality checking throughout the rest of the semester. Um, so this section probably isn't the one that's going to really come back to bite you as much later on. Once you get through this homework and this first statistic exam, that's more over the section. You won't see a lot of this in like unit, the last um, section. You will, however, see a lot of normal distributions from here on out. So where you were finding um, z-scores in areas using the inverse norm and the normal CDF, that will come up a lot. You'll see that throughout the rest of the semester. So that's it for Chapter 6. Next time we get to move into Chapter 7, which is kind of introduces some, some of the really important materials we'll use the rest of the semester. So Chapter 7 is going to be fairly important, and that's coming up soon. Um, we'll see you there.